welcome to an exciting week where I do two episodes of The Heart Of because I just finished Marvel Spider-Man 2 and ho oh crap, what a game, what a game, what a game. I I think it's probably, you know, alongside Final Fantasy 16, uh, my game of the year. It's just, it's so hard to choose between them. But yeah, Spider-Man 2 was incredible. So, um... I'm going to break into it. I'm going to talk about it, what I think about it, what I think it's trying to say. Um, it's themes and messaging. I think it was an exquisite game that definitely had a lot of emotion. And before we jump into Spider-Man 2, we got to just give a quick recap of Spider-Man 1 and the subsequent in-between game, Miles Morales. So, Spider-Man 1 is about Spider-Man. Spider-Man, and he's been Spider-Man for eight years, and he uh, starts off the game, you know, bringing down Kingpin, and he's, you know, working with his Aunt May in a uh, feast, which is a homeless shelter, and things are going great. Uh, he's working for his mentor, Otto Octavius, to try to, you know builds prosthetics for people who need them and technology for people who need them. Uh, Otto is this great selfless guy and things are going great. Uh, turns out the person that runs Feast, Martin Lee, was actually experimented on as a young child for uh, research purposes. Uh, goes horribly wrong. At that point, when he was a child, Norman and Otto had been working together. Uh, because of this, they split apart. Uh, Norman, you know, goes on with Oscorp, and Otto is a poor, struggling scientist who needs grants to survive. So, keep going, keep going. Uh, Martin Lee kills a lot of people. You're introduced to the character Miles. Uh, Peter and MJ's relationships is on the rocks. Peter, uh, you know, is trying to hold it all together. Otto begins to go crazy because he has a degenerative disease and he creates these prosthetics, but in the process, uh, they mess with his mind. So he's going bananas and he, uh, frees a bunch of Super villains. He finds a bioweapon that Oscorp worked on. He releases it into New York. It's bing, bang, boom. Spider-Man's doing a lot of fighting. Uh, uncovers some mysteries. Uh, <laughs> the bioweapon is released by Otto, who's trying to make a point to destroy Norman. Everyone gets sick. Uh, Aunt May sadly passes away as they develop a cure. Miles gets bitten by a radioactive spider and becomes Spider-Man. Now, skip, skip, skip. We have the Miles game. And the Miles game, Peter is off uh, with MJ after they had reforged their relationship to go to Sicaria to cover a war there. Miles... Uh, now is the sole defender of New York in Spider-Man, in the other Spider-Man's absence. A company called Roxxon is trying to develop a renewable energy. They make their base in Harlem. You find out that Miles' best friend Finn had a brother who was killed, uh, working on this project, and that Roxxon is not as good as they seem, and they are an awful company, and... Miles discovers what it means to be Spider-Man through sacrifice and determination. Now, I left a lot of chunks out of these games because these are incredible games and they're absolutely worth playing. But just so you kind of get the broad strokes of what's going on. The, the big important thing is that Pete lost MJ, Miles lost his dad, and they're both Spider-Man and they're both trying to figure it out. Great. Uh, Otto is back in prison. You find out in the game that Harry Osborn, Peter's best friend, has been sick, and he's been in a tank with this mysterious black substance, Venom. So, 
really cool stuff. So that sets the stage for Spider-Man 2. Peter is still trying to hold down a job. Uh, first is Miles' teacher in Brooklyn Visions. Miles is trying to be Spider-Man, and he's trying to be there for his friends, and he's trying to write his college application essay. He's trying to do all the things that being Spider-Man means, but he's also trying to do all the things that being Miles means. Same thing for Peter. Now, in Peter's life, Harry had re-emerged, and he's back on the scene. Um, you know, he's healthy, uh, and he... He, in his excitement of having Harry back, he kind of starts to neglect Miles. Not intentionally, but best friend is back, and you haven't seen him because he's sick. And the whole thing is that over the course of the game, you know, resentment starts to build up unspoken resentment so peter is spending all this time with harry he's trying to get peter a new job uh at this foundation dedicated to his mom miles is building up this kind of unspoken resentment with his friends because he's so busy being spider-man he's trying to help his community he's trying to help his mom uh he's trying they're trying to balance all these things so this unspoken resentment builds up so while all this is happening, the new villain in town is Craven the Hunter. Craven has been kidnapping supervillains, and he's been fighting them to the death. And those who don't win die. So while they're trying to figure all this out, all this is happening, they're also trying to deal with their personal lives. So the, the one of the themes of the story is balanced and trying to maintain that sort of balance. I think they both, as most Spider-Men do, have a horrible time doing so. And a lot of the game's main story and a lot of the game's side content, great side content, is about time. And, and there's these two stories I want to mention in particular with side content. Uh, Peter uh, finds this young woman and she lost her grandpa. And she doesn't know where he is. And through puzzles and fun little side uh, mini games, you find him at a park overlooking some water. And he reminisces on, you know, getting engaged to his wife and just how time passes in the blink of an eye and how you just have to cherish these moments and love these moments. And and what I love is Spider-Man just takes the time to sit down and talk to him. To really just sit down and listen. Listen to what this guy is trying to say. I don't know if Peter really hears it in the moment. And there's another one where you help someone relocate some pigeons and put him at peace so when he passes away he knows that he's done everything he can again peter has conversations with these people but i don't think peter really hears them and what they're trying to say about letting time and things go and really appreciating the moment miles is having a lot of these life moments pass by because he's so focused on how to be a better Spider-Man. Um, and that with the story of, you know, Pete's relationship with Harry, and it's it becomes this dance of how do we balance all this? How do we, you know, make the time for the people in our lives that are important? You know, Miles can't make the time for his friends. He can't make the time for his mom because he's so focused on being Spider-Man. And, you know, we're not all superheroes, but I think that theme, that idea is so universal. That idea that I'm so busy with. Replace superhero with work. And it becomes a one-to-one. -one. 
I have work, I have these bills, I, I have to maintain, I have to keep going forward. And you get caught in your own miasma, your own micro universe that you can't see far beyond it. You can't see far beyond your own pain, your own time, that you just have to sometimes, it's, it's, it's Herculean sometimes to make the gears stop so you can spend time with the people you love. And Miles and Peter are struggling to do that. They hear people, but they don't hear people. That makes sense. Mary Jane is working at the Daily Bugle and she's, you know, struggling. And, and Peter is not malicious. He's not a dick when he's trying to be like, it's going to be okay. But, you know, he's also just struggling. So we can't give more than just the, it's going to be okay. But sometimes in a partnership, you have to, you have to do more. You have to stop your own wheels for a moment just to truly be there for someone else. And again, it's one of those, it's easier said than done. But that idea that both, you know, Miles and Peter have to struggle through this. So they're going through, they're trying to figure out who Craven is. And in the meantime, Harry is no longer sick. Well, the reason Harry is no longer sick is because he's been in that tank with a symbiote. They don't know what it is, but the suit makes him better, and the suit has taken an attraction to Peter. And in a fight at one point in the game, now, this is going to be mild to major spoiler. Just because All I'm going to say is how the suit gets transferred to Peter. And so... Peter is stabbed and is on the brink of death. And the suit transfers to Peter. And over the course of the game, Peter is dealing with this pent-up resentment because he's had to take care of everything for so long. The city letting, you know, his personal life go to risk. And, you know, it's almost like the symbiote is revealing these truths that Peter is buried so deep down inside that he can't even see anymore. He's so unaware of this and he's pushing everyone away. He's being so horrible to everyone, not because he's a horrible person, but this, this on, you know, the symbiotes bringing all of the subconscious to the forefront. And while that's happening, Miles is going through his own thing, as I said. So that's where I'm going to go with the story. It's about, you know, stopping the symbiote invasion and the characters that it latches onto. It brings this subconscious resentment out that these people have buried so deep in time. You know, all the things that they ever really wanted. You may have brushed off that you feel deep down. They are coming to the forefront. So other characters get a taste of that. And it almost forces them to, you know, talk about, openly, honestly talk about how they're feeling. Where, again, these are nice, wonderful people and characters. But sometimes you have to just say how you're really feeling. You have to make the time to say how you're really feeling in your heart. And before you say something, you regret. Before you do something, you regret. So Peter's on that journey to just, just learn how to stop and make time. And you know, there's a great moment. There's a great flashback when Peter's so frustrated, he punches a hole in the wall. As a high schooler, and Aunt May comes up and and she's like, Peter. When I was in high school, I tried to do this, 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 and this, and and I burned it everything and something had to give and the the monster of it all is balance so just trying to make time because you don't know when it's all going to go away and i think these stories these games 
seem trivial because it's like, okay, you're a superhero and you're fighting a villain. Like I mentioned in the other episode, it's easy to be like, what does it matter? What is it? What's what's the point? But the point is I can take these metaphors, this idea that Peter's not listening, Miles isn't listening, they're not making the time for the people they love, and I can apply that, but take away superhero and put in work, put in the daily grind that's so easy to get caught in the rut of, where you're not, you can't see the forest from the trees, and you can't look past, like, just having conversations, there's a moment where Miles gets to peer into Peter's subconscious, and he gets to see the hurt that's been in Peter since game one when Aunt May died. And he gets to be like, wow, I haven't brought up May in a long time. I haven't asked Peter how he feels about that, how he feels about May. And because it's like, it's not because Miles forgot. It's not like Miles doesn't love and appreciate Aunt May. Miles is also caught up in his own pain of losing his own father. It's unintentional hurt. It's unintentional pain. It's it's something you just have to stop and, and be cognizant of that oh, I have to make an effort because it's the, a relationship isn't easy. Whether that's a romantic relationship, a friendship relationship, it, it takes time and effort and you have to dig into it. And I think... What I really took from Marvel Spider-Man is that relationships take time, that you have to look past the own microcosm of your own universe to really check in with people, to see how they are, um, to treasure the relationships you do have. I think... It's one of the best Spider-Man stories that I've gotten to see, obviously in video games, but even compared to the movies. And, you know, there's so many things, by the way, that I haven't even touched on in in this game. Because I think it's it's genuinely worth playing and getting into. You know, I I broke a little more, a little more of my spoilery stuff because it's just... It's so good that, you you know, I want to set the stage. I want to get you invested so you can find out what the story's about. So, yeah, you know, I got to say, just, it was moving. It was incredible. What Insomniac has been able to do with Game 1, with the Miles game, with this game, has been nothing short of incredible. So, that's been the heart of. I hope you found that really interesting. I know I thought... It was incredible. So thank you. Have a wonderful day.